Hi everybody, it's Casey Williams. Well, one of my really good friends called me the other day. She and her husband have an older Mercedes C-Class wagon. It has almost 200,000 miles on it. And she's looking around trying to figure out what she wants next. And she said, I really like a new Mercedes C-Class wagon, but they don't import the C-Class wagon in the United States anymore. And since they bought that car, they've since moved to a small farm and they're off-road a little bit. And I thought to myself, you know, I might have exactly the car that she wants. In fact, I might even be sitting in my driveway this week. It's the Volvo V60 Cross Country. Let's go have a look at it. I think Volvo designers did a really nice job of taking some of the car's classic design cues and bringing them forward and just really giving it a crisp look. It really starts with the front. You know, you couldn't mistake the Volvo grille from anywhere with the big logo right in the middle of it. Obviously, you know what this car is. The Thor's Hammer driving lamps here in the middle. Also very nice. You know, this car has some pretense of doing a little bit of off-roading. You're not going to go do any hardcore off-roading, but, you know, just to get down a gravel road or to get across a pasture on a farm. No problem there. The black cladding down below to protect the body a little bit. Same around the wheel wells. And a little thicker side sill down the side. Again, just kind of keep the rocks up away from the body. Come around the side. You know, Volvo's really known for those, you know, those really thick shoulder lines on the car. And this has those, but they've kind of just been nicely integrated. Just a little, again, just a little more crisp, a little more integrated. I like the line off the hood, the line here, again, just gives the car a little tension. Very thick through here, again, kind of hinting at that traditional shoulder that you had on the classic Volvos. Roof line, just gently sloping down towards the rear. 19-inch alloy wheels. It just gives that car just a really strong stance, really athletic presence. I think it looks very nice. Coming around the back, twin exhaust outlets. Another traditional Volvo Q for the last you know, couple generations. Tail lamps coming here from the roof. Again, just integrated very nicely. Power hatch. And a very nice luggage compartment. Seats fold down. You've got the skis passed through in the middle if you want it. Nicely carpeted, tie downs. Plenty of space to get your gear in. A real spare tire underneath, of the, underneath the floor. So again, just very well done. Well, as you'd expect in a Volvo, you know, everything inside of it's well made, but nothing's particularly ostentatious. It just looks very well designed and very well integrated. It just starts with the wood grain here on the console, cup holders down below, wood here, the silver trim, stitching on the dash, and even the seats. You know, Volvos are known for having nice cushy seats that are also supportive, and these are just absolutely classic. Lower cushions extend, they're heated. Also got a heated leather wrap steering wheel that feels very nice. I just like all that very, very well. And the infotainment system. You know, Volvo's really gone in and just really updated all the electronics in this car and just made them absolutely cutting edge. It starts with a flat screen. Instrument cluster looks very nice. We have a head-up display and the touch screen. The first time I ever used their system, I thought it was confusing, but it's become one of my favorites now. You, know, you get your central, central display screen here, got navigation, audio, foam, and your sound experience. Swipe right once. And what I really like too is they have all the safety systems on one screen. So you can turn them on, turn them off right here, and even when you turn the car off, it all stays as you set it. I think it's all very nice. So you got lane keep assist, you got your parking assist system, cross traffic alert, you've got adaptive cruise in the car, it's got forward collision warning system, auto stop start for the engine, that's here as well, um, automatic parallel and perpendicular parking systems, and the car will even pull itself out of the parking spot, I think that's very cool. Your heads up display adjustments are all here, blind spot warning, again, just absolutely everything you'd want all here. You got lane keep assist on the car, Everything you need. Of course, it's a Volvo, so you expect all the safety systems. Swipe left, swipe left again. All the audio controls are here AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth controls, all that's here. Apple CarPlay, all the integrations here. Android Auto as well. And the one thing I really like that Volvo does, they have a Bowers and Wilkins audio system. And I think it's one of the best audio systems I've ever heard in a car. It's a $4,000 upgrade, so it sure ought to be a pretty good system. But the sound exp experience, you can customize it. You can set it for a studio sound, for an individual stage, or my favorite is the concert hall. And they've tried to replicate the Gothenburg concert hall that was built in 1935 to try to give you that really big full sound that you would have in a real concert experience. So everything about the car to me is just a delight to be in it. Well, under the hood of our car is a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine. It delivers 250 horsepower and 258 pound feet of torque. In a car this size, I think that's enough power. This car also has an 8-speed automatic transmission, makes good use of that power, and all-wheel drive to get it down, whether you're stomping it on dry pavement or trying to get through snow. Fuel economy, 22 miles per gallon in the city, 31 miles per gallon on the highway. It'd be nice if that ticked up a couple miles per gallon, but it's, again, not bad for a car like this with that much power and all-wheel drive. But the thing I really like about driving this car 
you know, I like driving a car. You know, crossovers, you sit up high, you can see out, but you also, you know, kind of wallows and curves and stuff. You just can't overcome that, that higher ride height. This is a car. You know, it's, it's elevated just a little bit, just for a little extra ground clearance, but it handles well, drives nice, and feels like an expensive car. So they got a couple other tricks in the car. It's got adjustable drive modes. So I've got comfort right now, which sets the steering and the throttle for just, just a little, little more comfortable, I guess, a little lighter. You can put an echo, makes the throttle a little less sensitive to help save gas. You can put it in dynamic to, again, make the throttle a little more sensitive um, to get down the road a little bit faster. It doesn't create any more horsepower, but it just kind of brings the power on a little bit faster when you step on it. So the things I like about this car, you just kind of sitting in it, driving it. The seats are, you know, typical Volvo. They're really pillowy, soft, and comfortable, but they're also supportive. You know, it's got good lumbar support. It's got good side bolstering. The lower cushion extends. I like the way the steering wheel feels. It's the right size. It's got a heads-up display. You know, it's nice for driving. And the gauge cluster. I've got the flat screen instruments. Nice color, very crisp, easy to see it. Right now, navigation's on. It's actually in the gauge cluster as well. Again, just everything's just very convenient and very easy to drive. With the popularity of crossovers, there aren't that many station wagons left on the market. Mercedes and most of the European automakers have really gone on to crossovers for their, their key customers. In fact, over 80% of the station wagons sold in the United States are built by Subaru. But it's really nice that Volvo still makes a station wagon version of, of the 60 series. And for my friend who, who just has the farm and really would like a European wagon, this could be a really, really, really good choice. So let's talk about pricing. Well, the car starts just under $40,000 for the V60 without the cross-country package. To add the off-road accoutrement, you're looking at about $45,000. This one, all in, $56,990. That's a little pricey, but keep in mind that includes a $4,000 audio system. Well, next week we'll have another fun car. Until then, storm forward.